Well, here's what I want you to think about. Um, and this comes from, by the way, this comes from a lot of this, like many Sundays. Um, one of the advantages of being in a small group, or what here at Grandview we call cell groups, is that you come together with a group of people and, and, and you start from Scripture. You start from what you've read in God's Word. And then the conversation moves to real life, real life applications, implications, impact, challenges. And so the cell group ministry here at Grandview is, is vitally important. It's important to me. And so I have a chance to meet with uh, a group of men. Uh, we've met on Tuesdays for about eight years, eight or nine years, something like that. And so um, there's, you know, different guys come and, and, and go, but there's, 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 there's this great group and we talk about things. And the thing about the, the guys on Tuesdays is that sometimes the things that they say show up in sermons, right? And, and, and I don't always give them credit, right? I want to be the smart one. No, I'm joking, okay? Is that the guys help, that, that's what it means to live in community, okay? Is that we talk about this, and it, it may be Ron Turner, it may be Aaron Haven, or maybe Matt, whatever, but um, we talked about this, and I want you to think about this. I want you to think about who do you invite into your house or your apartment? Right? Your dwelling place, place where you live. I don't want to get into all the different kinds of architecture, but, but who do you invite to your place? And, and not just who do you invite into your house or your apartment, but how far into that physical dwelling place do you want them to come? Begin to think about that. How far do you want them to come? You know, um, like, like it's not just who do you trust enough? Who do we trust Enough to allow into our physical, personal space. But it's also how far. Now, let me clarify that if you're going how far. Like, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's once upon a time, houses had front porches, right? So once upon a time, there was like front porch uh, trust. There was like, you know, the neighbors, people walking by, you hang out. Now, architecture such as the decks on the back and the garages on the front, right? And so we don't have that. But still, still, you probably have, you know, maybe a, a, a front yard, a sidewalk, a driveway, um, or some kind of thing. So, so, you know, that might be as far as you trust some people. It, it's right there, kind of outside, but still on your personal property, right? Or maybe, maybe it's in the front door, Right? How much do you trust somebody to, to, to come into your home, your personal private space, and then how far? How far? Or maybe it's your living room, that place we call a living room, like where we live, right? Or a formal room. Some of us that are old enough, we know that, that there was kind of still a carryover, kind of like the parlor, right? Kind of like the nice sitting room. And then there are other places and spaces in the house where we live. Now I think that for many people, you've got like your living room or you've got a space, uh, and then you've got a family room. And the family room might be the a place where it's in total disarray with you know snuggle blankets and socks on the floor and all that kind of stuff, right? Like some of you. Not, I know we're not all the same. So again, the question is how far? Do you invite them into your dining room? Do you invite them into your kitchen? There's been different people through the years that have said that that's a true sign of friendship or trust is that when you have kitchen rights, you know, is that people can hang out with you in, in, in the kitchen, right? And so those are two things to think about. Who do you invite into your personal space, and how far into your personal space. And here's the next thing added to it. Is that have you ever noticed that many times we'll say to somebody when they come to our personal space, come on in and what? Make yourself right at home. Make yourself at home. But here's the truth. And this doesn't mean we're bad. We don't always mean that. Fair enough? We don't always mean that. We don't always mean like, you know, like, hey, come on in, make yourself at home. If you see something in the fridge that you want, eat it, take it. If you see something in the pantry, go for it. Put your feet on the furniture, throw your socks in the middle of the floor, right? Just like at home, right? Throw your coat on the floor. We probably don't mean that, right? But um, it, it's got some meaning. So, you know, it's, it's um, sometimes that we actually do mean that, though. I was thinking about that, is that sometimes we actually do mean that. Like, you know, make yourself at home. And we say to people, we say to people, come in and, and really because of trust and because of love and because of a comfortableness with that person, you can go where you want in my house. And most people are respectful, so it's not like they're going to go into your bedroom and go through your sock drawer. Fair enough, right? Most people. But anyway, okay. Sometimes we mean it. I was thinking about 
um, that uh, this week and, and, and uh, yesterday and this morning when I was writing this out and thinking about, you know, uh, some, of the, some of the people that, that, that I've gone to Nigeria with is, is that we've built a, a trust and a bond. And, and sometimes you'll hear me reference some of those folks. But, um, but, but, but it, it's this kind of thing, you see? So, so like, if, if Matt and, and Joy Booth come to my house and both, we've been to Nigeria and we've, you know, roughed it, right? That's like extreme camping, you know? In Nigeria, so yeah, I did have you come to the back door, but don't tell them that, Joey. It's just, um, but you know, they came. They came to my house. The boys had never been there in their life. You know, Carter and Graham, and they were like just like innately, they sensed that there was a comfort there. They came in in the. I think they came in through the garage. Came in there, and the boys like pew, took off, went down in the basement. They were lifting weights. They were flipping channels, and like they they were comfortable, and that's okay. Blaine Telford came by one day to talk to me, and so we went out on my deck to talk in the sunshine. And Brogan, his little guy, was with him, and he just hung out in the house, and he fell asleep on the couch, right? His feet on my furniture, and that's okay. Is my point? Is that some people, that's okay. Why? Because there's a trust and there's a comfort and there's a familiarity, right? And so um, we say, make yourselves right at home. And we mean it, right? But most times there's limits and that's okay. Most times there's limits when we think about, and I ask you to think about, who do you invite into your home and how far, right? Right? And I'm thinking deeply about this. There's usually, there's usually movement, right? I mean, there's limits, but there's possibilities that there's movements in, in how far people come. And again, a lot of this relates to trust and familiarity and comfort level. And so some people may start out in the front yard, and then they may move to the backyard. Or, or I think about my experience with my neighbor across the street, a, a man that I respect immensely, and uh, he's a retired guy. And, and so, you know, I was thinking back like, like seven, eight, Eight years ago, we would talk in his driveway or in the street, right? And we were getting to know each other. And then pretty soon, I might go over to his, outside of his driveway or by his front door, and then he'd come over, but it was still outside. And then, and then several years ago, I was trying to get this old motorcycle of mine going, and it was smoking, and I was revving it and burning off all this oil. And Gil kind of came over in a hurry because of the smoke rolling out of my garage. He's going, are you okay? Have you set the place on fire? Suddenly he moved to garage rights. Y'all with me, church? Does this make sense? Garage rights, you know? And, and, and I'm using that to illustrate there can be movement with people. And I find that interesting. Is someone may come and they may start in the living room, the formal room, and that's kind of it. But as over time, that may move to the dining room or to the kitchen or to the family room, right? To watch football or hang out or do whatever or to the garage or to the deck. You get my point is who do you invite into your personal space and how far, right? And how far usually has to do with trust and familiarity, right? Trust. Like people that we invite to our homes and we don't spend an hour and a half frantically running around putting things under the bed and stuffing them into the closet to make look, look like we live in a better homes and garden house. People that we can invite into our home and things are what they are and there's some dirty dishes in the sink and maybe the counters need wiped and you just say to them, hey, I live here, right? Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Say yes. That's trust and that's love and, and that's trust that they're not going to judge you. It's trust that they're not going to go gossip about you. You know, who do you invite into your home? Well, this isn't just interesting musing about our human habits. I want you to understand that this is about this is about uh, something we know about. We know about inviting people into our homes, friends, family, whatever. We know about that. Maybe we, we've never articulated it before. We know that that uh, it, it rests on trust and love and, and, and familiarity. We know that. And so just like how Jesus taught, he would say, you know about the farmer that sows seeds in the field as a way to earn, learn this new thing about how God sows God's word. I look at that and say it's the same kind of, of, of technique. We know about inviting people into our home and and what that's like. And so the big question, you probably know where I'm going uh, with this, is when it comes to invitation, um, uh, what about inviting God into our homes? What about inviting God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all of God, 
into our personal spaces, into the places where we wake up in the mornings and we do our thing and, and maybe we're there part of the day, we come home, we've got stuff to do, we've got projects, we putter around, we come home and maybe we just veg out in front of the TV, we go to sleep there, that place. What about, have you invited God into your personal space and how far? How far? Like just some places, but not other places? I think it's a question worth pondering. And, and, and it comes from what I'd said earlier. This is, this is the advantage of reading God's word over and over. I, this week I kept going back to the fact that Jesus was invited to the wedding. He was invited. Him and his disciples and Mary, they were invited. They, they, were, they were desired guests. When you think about when you give somebody a specific invitation, you want them to show up. Everybody agree with that? Say yes. You want them to show up. And that's where this comes from. And so, again, is that question, it's that question about your home, where you sleep and have your stuff, right? Has Jesus been invited into your home? And which parts? Does he have refrigerator rights? I was joking about how if you're on a diet and you're cheating on your diet, you probably tell Jesus to stay away from the fridge. Amen? And don't watch what I'm eating either, okay? It's a joke, okay? But, but, but the serious part is, how, how far? I mean, which parts have you invited Jesus to in your home? I mean, like, like the living room, the kitchen? You, you, do you have that space that, where you sleep at night? You know, have you ever considered that? You see, I think that part of what this pushes on, folks, is our tendency, perhaps, not everybody, but our tendency to compartmentalize. Or to separate out different activities at different physical locations. Especially when it comes to God and the practice of the Christian faith. Like I think it's easy to, to think about you know, um, practicing our Christian faith, being into Jesus here. Or in a, in, a, in a church building, if you will. We know that that place has been set apart, sanctified. We know that, right? And so it can be easy... You know, it can be easy knowing that Jesus has been invited into this space, but what about other places like your house? Compartmentalize, compartmentalizing things maybe can make that difficult. You know, and we say it's easy to invite Jesus to find a home in me when I'm in worship, whether at home or here or in Sunday school or in a, a, a Bible study or cell group. I was thinking more deeply about this that before COVID came, remember those days like back in February and January? I still think this message and this point would be worth considering. It's valid. Have you invited Jesus into your personal spaces? Have you invited Jesus into your home? Have you said, you, you're a desired guest, the presence of the Holy Spirit, I want you here, right? In my personal space, my house, my apartment, my dwelling place. I think pre-COVID, I think that this message was valid. During COVID, I realize that this message and this point is probably more relevant than ever. Because obviously I'm looking at a blue light in the back because there are people that I hope are still tuned in and are still listening and worshiping. And it's more relevant because many, many people are doing worship and doing small groups and doing Bible studies on a screen from their house or from their apartment or from sp some space in their, in their dwelling space. And we all along have been graceful and said, that's okay. If you're not comfortable, if your health prevents you from being around crowds, please, please stay home, but don't feel alone. Stay home, but don't feel all alone. And so we get that. And so it's the same message whether you're at home or whether you're sitting here and I'm looking at your, your faces, Right? Have you invited Jesus into your home, right? Have you invited Jesus and the ways of Jesus and the Holy Spirit of, of God into your home? The second question, though, that I want to go to is this. So whether you're at home or whether you're here, have you experienced the presence of God in your house or your personal spaces? Have you experienced the presence of God in the places, your living room, your sleeping room, right? Your garage, outside in your yard, in your garden, on your deck. Have you experienced God? If so, then I really want to say this to you. I really want you to consider now that perhaps you're living on holy ground. 
If you've experienced God in these places, if you've experienced God in these places, then consider this. Maybe you never have. You're in a sacred space. Remember the definition? It's a place where your life and God have intersected. It's a place where God has felt more real than ever. It's a place that um, you have some special memories there, not just of, of, and and these are valid, like of of kids and and, and friends and whatever, Um, but it's more than that. It's, It's a holy ground and sacred space because of these three things that you see on the slide coming together. And maybe it's worth thinking about that. And if you've never experienced God in your personal spaces or the presence of God in your personal space, or if you've never taken that step to consider what if, what if where I go to sleep at night and wake up in the morning, what if it were considered holy ground? What if, what would life be like? Would it be different? What if, what if you felt that way? What if you felt like Jacob when you look at your house or your dwelling place? What if, what if you said, this is awesome. God is in this place. God is in this place, right in my basement, right? What would that look like? Would life be different? And so, you know, I asked that question, right? I asked the question like, you know, what about? What about, what would it be like uh, in your physical house as well as your spiritual house that, that it was holy ground? But here's the next step because we can't be done yet. How do you get there? So there's always got to be this practical part of it, right? So how do you get there? How do we get there? If this this sounds pretty compelling, this sounds pretty cool, this sounds pretty helpful, this sense that even where I where I live, my physical space, I look at it with new fresh eyes, like fresh spectacles, and say, wow, this is holy ground. But how do I get there? Well, here, this little short video is what I believe is one piece of it. One piece of getting to feeling like you're living on holy ground, and your home is sacred space. Let's watch this, please. Yeah, that all makes sense to everybody. Say yes. That's one piece of it. One piece of it is having that kind of hard look and evaluation about building. Jesus obviously told that parable, but he was telling the truth. Obviously saying, saying Jesus and the ways of Jesus are foundational. They're foundational, both for individuals and, and for whoever else lives in your home. And this idea of building upon him means knowing who he was. It means knowing who he was, and it means, it means knowing what he did, and it means knowing what he wants us to do, including, ready for this? Allowing the Holy Spirit of God to lead us 
and to guide us and to strength, strengthen us and to provide for us, even to protect us in all the places that we find ourselves. So part of, of moving to your home being holy ground is taking a look at the foundation that you personally are building upon and what your household is built upon. Now here's the second, here's the second thing that I think is really, really practical, really, really practical for moving to this idea that you're going to live and breathe and do on sacred ground, on, on, in a holy space, holy ground, sacred space, holy ground, right? And this is what I'm going to invite you to do starting today, okay? It's called a prayer walk, okay? Now, maybe some of you have done these. Maybe you've done them on special occasions, and you've done them in your neighborhood. You've done them at camp. You've done them whatever. Maybe you've remembered that I've talked about how here at Grandview, myself and the ministry staff periodically will, will, will prayer walk around the building and the grounds and all the spaces here, and we ask for God's Holy Spirit to come through. And maybe you've heard me talk about how this is my habit. It has been my habit for so many years of every single Sunday praying for all of you and all of you at home and and walking through the spaces here. I'm encouraging you to do what? I'm encouraging you to do the same thing at your house. And this is practical. I'm encouraging you today and once a week to walk through every space and every room in your home and to pray to God in the name of Jesus for the Holy Spirit to come through and be in that place okay and so you may be saying well like pray what um you know i'm gonna feel a little bit awkward you might at first but you won't after you get into the habit of doing it right if you believe and i hope and i trust that you believe in god's answering prayers and in god showing up what i'm all i'm inviting you to do is to invite the Holy Spirit of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit into all the places of your home. And so you may be saying, well, like, like pray what? Well, you know, think about this. We have this 714 Advent prayer calendar right now. It's online. There's a hard copy. And every single day of this is a variation, is a, is, is a prayer of God in the name of Jesus. I pray your Holy Spirit come to me. This is just a template. It's a way to start. But imagine walking through every single space under your roof and maybe around the outside in your yard or on your deck and maybe praying something like, come Holy Spirit into this place. Be present to me. Be present to all who enter. Bless me with the sense of your presence. Bless me right? With your presence, with the sense that when I cross the threshold of this home, of this apartment, of this place, that I feel this sense of assurance, and I feel a sense of comfort, and I feel a sense of confidence, and I feel that I'm going to be okay no matter what, because Lord God Almighty, you live at my house with me, right? You're everywhere, but how awesome is this place because you're here. Folks, I couldn't wait to give this message to you this week. I couldn't wait to encourage you to try this, to do it, right? And, and then tell me, tell me what happens. Really, tell me what happens. Do you feel a change? Do you feel a shift? See, this is all going to the theme that God, it's all going with the theme that God wants to live in you. God wants to find home in you. And God wants you to find home in your living, in your everyday with a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. This is what God desires. And God desires this, why? So that every single one of us will really truly know peace. Peace, that sense of wholeness, that sense of the broken parts being put back together, that sense of no conflict, no war, no drama. God wants us to live in a state of peace that passes all understanding and confidence in God. And God wants us to live in a sense of security and safety. And mostly, I think God wants us to live in the light and in the light of hope for a positive future. All those things feels like home to me. And this is what God wants for you, wherever you're at and whatever's going on in your life. And so I invite you this week, not just think about these things, not just consider whether your house is holy ground, but to ask God to make it so. Let's pray about that, please. Lord God, you do know us and you know everything that's going on under our roof. 
So Lord God, you know, you know where you most want to show up. I pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of your spirit that you do it today and this week. I pray, Lord, for all of these things that you offer to us. I pray that you help us to grab hold of them and to accept them. I pray that you help us in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. As all of us say out loud, wherever we are, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.